The section we're going to cover now is basically one of the easy parts of it. Um, not a very difficult sort of conceptual thing. Um, not if you've got one of these guys lying around, that is, because, I mean, it's one of my favorite toys to play with with the students in many different forms and, and, and guises. But what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the application of um, at Snell's law, right? So we're going to be looking at refraction and diffraction, okay? Where we make, we're going to make diffraction patterns, interference patterns, and things like that, okay? Let us just look and, and say to ourselves, right, first of all, we know that light traveling in a vacuum, you, you get it and you've all seen it before, that light has got a speed of, um, just let me get that, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And it's always given as C, so we say, right, C is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Speed of light in a vacuum, right? But let's just call it an air or whatever we want to do for the time being. It's not too serious. What happens when this light ray comes down and it goes into, now this here we call the, the normal, which you know. So here's our light ray coming down. Now it's in, an, it's, let's say it's in air over here, okay? And it's traveling fast. Picture yourself running down the beach, right? You're running in air. Then all of a sudden you veer into the water. What happens? You start feeling the drag of the water against your legs, your fric the friction, okay? The viscosity, the stickiness, the thickness, whatever you want to call it, right? You start feeling it. It starts to slow you down. So what happens is you slow down like that, right? Easy concept to think of. The only thing we've got to look here, the normal. Well, what is a normal? The normal is the line that's perpendicular to, to a surface, right? That's all the normal is. We know what that is from, from mechanics. We know what it is from maths as well. Same thing, all right? Let's have a look. Let's put in some, some, um, some whatchamacallits here. Uh, this is theta i because this is here my incident ray, right? Now this is theta r. This is called my refracted ray. And can you see that when I'm going from the air running into water, I lose velocity. Therefore, I'm slowing down and I am diffracted, refracted, sorry, towards the normal. Just think of it coming in and then oh, slows down, okay? Similarly, if you're running in water and you go the opposite way, what happens? Let's just put it on our diagram. Um, let's put a green one. Here we go. I'm running in this thicker stuff here. Now, remember, this is my incident, right? This is I. So that's theta I. And all of a sudden, I go out and theta R because I can go faster. Okay. So in terms of the refraction issues and the use of Snell's law, we're going to put this as air and a denser medium. All right. What does that mean? It means that there is a measure of this which is called N, which is the refractive index, air and N of, let's say, water. They are different. It's a measure of the refractive index. That's what we're talking about with N. Okay. So just to recap those simple concepts, the incident ray goes from the source of the light that you're looking at. So in the example we're going to look at, where they actually talk about the, um, they talk about the, uh, um, the car keys or something lying at the bottom of the pool, or they could be the archer fish, right? Um, where the fish actually, I mean, amazing creature, if you've ever watched it, where it can sits underwater and its prey is on a, on a leaf overhanging, a little insects over there. And it can shoot the trajectory of the water, but it can actually account for the refraction that's happening uh, above it. So it's coming from water to air. So we're going to diffract or refract away from the normal, right? We're going to speed up, right? Uh, please, I mean, when you go through these things, you, you get, might get one where it says um, track the, the wave through two different uh, 
uh, uh, uh, media, where it goes from air to glass to glycerine to something else, right? Remember, you just each time you change your incident, you sit and you surf the wave through it, right? So you sit on the wave, you incident from the one medium to the other, then that becomes your incident ray. And you go to the next interface, the next medium, and that's your incident ray for that, for the calculations you're going to do. All right? And you know all of this is predicated on Snell's law, which once again, I know, I repeat myself a lot, but you have to remember it. Okay, the definition of Snell's law, Ni sine theta i is equal to Nr sine theta r. Okay? Where i stands for incident and r stands for refracted. Let's have a look at the problem that, uh, that we've been given, right? And a lot of this problem is actually really just basic trigonometry. Um, it's not, in essence, physics as such, but let's just go through it quite quickly. The trig I'm going to just basically go through very fast. All right. What they've said is that we've got, and, and here they give us, they may give you a drawing, they may not give you a drawing, or whatever the case might be. We know we've got our person standing, I'm not even going to try and draw a person, and they're looking into the pool. Let's give it a little bit of character. Okay. Okay. What have we got here? We have got a, um, let's, no, not blue because that's water. Let's put it as green. Okay. Right. They are in the pool. Okay. They fell in the pool. The only thing we know, let's put in some dimensions. We know that the person who's looking is 1.8 meters tall. We know the depth of the water is 2 meters. Now we measure an angle. Let's just, first of all, label the diagram. Well, remember, the key to this is you've got to take your ray from the object, okay? So the object is giving off a light ray that is coming up here like this, okay? Now, up like that, there's my normal. Remember, I'm going from a dense to a less dense medium, so I'm going to speed up and go into the I. So this is going to be I, that's going to be R. This angle in there is going to be theta I, and that's going to be theta R. Okay? Straightforward. We take it from the key, because we say the light ray that I'm seeing is coming from the key to my I. Right? Now let's put in what they've given. N of the water is one point. 327, N of the air is 1. Okay? So what can we say? Let's see what we can fill in on the, on the diagram. Ni, okay? N of the incident medium, yes, we've got 1.327, okay? Times, do we know? No, we don't know that angle. Sine of theta i is equal to, what they did give us is they told us, that we took a protractor and a ruler and we measured that this was 63 degrees okay which from geometry means this must be 63 degrees okay and this is going to be 27 degrees over there is it not okay so essentially we've got basically just a straightforward um, trig problem uh, let me just put in some Numbers, let's last of all put in our, where do we think it is? We think they're lying there, don't we? A, I labeled it A, B, C, and D like that, right? Because we think that the keys are lying there at A. That's what, that's what our I or our logic tells us. Tells us they must be over there, but we haven't accounted for the bend in the water, have we? Right. So let us see. We're coming up here from the keys, and we say, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, we've got an angle, 27 degrees, right? Times, uh, 1 is the refractive index of the air, times sine of 27 degrees, right? Correct. Well, that's cool. So, let's see what happens here. Ah, we can work out sine theta i, can't we? And if we go through that, theta i comes out to be? approximately 20 degrees, so we put in our 20 degrees over there, right? Simple as that, pretty easy, straightforward, okay? The next part of this is to say, right, then they've asked us some basic geometry. They want to know 
various things. Well, just split it into triangles. Can you see, first of all, we've got triangle A, um, D, and let me call this the I, right? We've got this triangle here. Can we work out AD? Well, we know that that is going to be 3.8 meters, and we know 63 degrees over there. 63, 63 parallel, parallel, right? And if we put that in, we can come out to um, 3.8 over X. Let's just look at this one. All right. Okay. We would say 3.8 over X, which is AD in this case. So let me label it as AD. Sorry. Let me label that as AD. And AD is going to be equal to, at the end of the day, is equal to 10 of 63. Okay. So we find AD. AD 1.936. All right. Okay, 1.936 meters. Then we say, all right, uh, let's work out, um, I don't know, um, let's work out BC, shall we? Well, let's put in the triangle BC. BC and 2 meters. And over here, we've got 70 degrees, right? So we do the same process and we get BC is going to be equal to a 0.728. All right. You can see these are just basic basic maths uh, um, issues that we've got to do. Let's calculate CD. Let's look at the triangle. We say right CD, and that's going to be 1.8 meters there, and we're going to work out that length. Same story. We'd say 1.8 over CD is equal to. 10 of 63 degrees. Therefore, we can work out CD is equal to 0.968 meters. And at the end of the day, we end up with a diagram like this, where we've got A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And we know that 1.936 is that one. Okay. And we know 0.728 is there. We know 0.968 is there, all right, and we can work out that as 0.24 and add those up and they, they come to the same. In essence, there's just a lot of, there's not really a lot of calculation. There's just some good opportunities for some short questions. And as I've said before, not a very difficult, um, difficult scenario. The next question is asking us to discuss um, the... Um, in phase, out of phase, red light through a single slit. Now, just to recap, what happens here is that we're using the principle of diffraction, aren't we? Because as this wave approaches the slit here in this direction, and just to be, that's lambda, this slit over here has got a width d. We notice that we get a bending as it goes through. It diffracts as it goes through, right? And there's a relationship between the wavelength and the width, right? If the width is very wide, we don't get much. Right? As we bring D close to lambda, we get the maximum diffraction When D equals lambda. In other words, when the gap between the two, between the two over there, when the gap between them D, okay, is equal to the wavelength coming at them, that's when we've got our uh, most diffraction, okay. Now, what happens, and, and, and we know that in the theory that as this moves out, these um, interfere with each other, right, and we get on the screen on the opposite side, we get a pattern, an interference pattern, which in this case we use red light. So let's draw it as red. All right. Uh, first, of, that's cool. Let's just draw this here like this. Obviously, I'm just doing it just for speed. All right. Put that through there like so. And what do we get? Well, we get a pattern that looks like this, right? Um, red. Uh, but more intense red 
and very intense red over there and on this side we kind of just go backwards okay and we go down there now what is happening at this point and at this point at this point this is dark and this is light what is happening here is we are getting the superposition of the two waves we're getting where it's dark the waves are exactly cancelling each other out remember that principle of superposition where it's light the waves are actually you've got constructive and destructive interference correct now when we've got constructive interference we get that at this point don't we constructive which means that at these points here where it's dark light dark where it's dark we get destructive okay and we've asked to talk about out of phase and in phase as well let's just go this is all theory there's no calcs in this i just want to cover it just from a theory point of view okay well there is one i'm going to show you a little bit of a, a, a thingy there let us now take a, a um a, a, a look at a wave shall we let me just um, draw a wave okay. I'm just going to put a baseline down over here like this and just draw a basic wave right now you know that that from there to there is the wavelength isn't it okay measured meters nanometers uh, kilometers if you like but generally speaking for what we're talking about here we're going to be down in the in the pretty small range okay the wavelength of light etc all right you know that's the wavelength and yeah we've got the amplitude and so forth we're not going into that now if we have got another wave I'm going to draw a wave in I don't know let's call it a green one all right and I'm just going to put this wave can you see that what is happening here I'm going to discuss it but this wave and the other wave the black wave underneath it right those waves are actually doing exactly the same with regard to displacement because what it means it means that as the wave train moves up and down okay like so right what is happening is that the displacement and you know the displacement right is in the normal to the direction of propagation in this case so what is actually happening let's just look at it as if it's a water wave shall we back to the black if I am here the black wave comes and it lifts me up to there doesn't it the black wave comes past and it drops us here and if there's another person here let's say person A and person B as this wave passes person A and B are they synchronize they're doing the same displacement they're going up and down the same amount okay twice the amplitude right so they are in phase they are synchronized they're doing exactly the same movement right now let us have a look at what does out of phase mean well let's first of all just consider the green and the uh, the black wave arrive with person a can you see that their amplitude is the same what does it mean it means person A instead of going that high is now going to go double the height right and person B is going to go double the height at the same time the poor person in the middle is going to go down double right that's the principle of superposition where the one wave acts to the other but now let's look at when they say bearing in mind they are in phase now let's look when we're out of phase all I'm going to do is I'm going to take another wave a red wave and I'm going to say all right let's have a look at you Okay, I'm going to advance the red wave so that it's exactly out of phase, right? What do I mean by out of phase? Well, it means that it's doing exactly the opposite displacement. Isn't it? In other words, when they are out of phase, they are cancelling each other out aren't they there's no resultant movement that's the interference pattern if if for those of you who who've done the whole course with me remember we did the uh, the coherent sources where they're in phase where we've got the crests and the troughs etc 
and we could work it out from there and the path difference okay remember that now over here we've got that's out of phase well let's look just straightforward and say to ourselves but hold on how do I link these waves up okay well this one okay there's it right you can see that what have I done I have advanced this wave by half a wavelength haven't I I have said okay the black wave was there in order to be out of phase I need this trot this crest to be exactly lambda lambda over 2 out right so if the wave is half a wavelength ahead or behind it's going to cancel it out entirely right so in phase is when the two waves are directly superimposition out of phase is lambda I keep doing that lambda over 2 um, difference in wavelength correct because I've advanced it half to make sure that it's cancelling out everywhere what's the next bit well the next bit is that um, well let's just say for constructive for constructive interference okay the, the two different waves must be lambda 2 lambda or 3 lambda right apart then I'll get constructive interference because my wavelengths are essentially combining my heights are combining exactly on a multiple of wavelengths right similarly for destructive for destructive interference I must be half a wavelength one and a half wavelengths etc 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 okay it's normally given as three over two lambda and five over two lambda those of you who go on to 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 physics at varsity you'll do this in 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 waves as well where you've got closed pipes open pipes strings that can vibrate and harmonics and beats and things like that all right for those of you who know music this is probably uh, right up your street okay so yeah what we've got there is we've got in phase and out of phase I've gone a little bit further with the the multiples of wavelengths but let's go on and say okay now we've got what happens if we do blue and purple well I'm just going to do a very quick um, thingy through what we know is is and some of you may have seen this formula before um, d sine theta is equal to n times lambda all this means is it's relating d is that width okay this angle here is the angle between the very bright okay and I've drawn it so badly uh, the very dark there all right where this is uh, the very dark part is a one and over here it's called a minus one that's the n value don't worry about it at this point all I'm trying to show you is that the angle here all right the amount of diffraction or difference between the bright and the dark is going to change depending upon the wavelength that we're given right because they've spoken about blue and purple waves versus red okay what happens here is we say let's take it between n is 1 so let's have a look n is equal to 1 times lambda d is that width there so we say that sine of theta is equal to lambda over d the wavelength of the light coming in here remember we had red first and now we're changing that to and I'm afraid I don't have purple but let's just call it blue all right now you can be given a number of uh, a number of things right um, let's just say we are given um, make another page and just bring it down a little bit okay uh, just take it to the different page okay let us say that uh, what they do is they give us light red light let's say they give us a, a red at a frequency
rid of a frequency and they give it to us as 4.286 times 10 to the 14. 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay. And they give us lambda red of, not red. <laughs> they give us, I'm trying to speed up a bit, blue frequency is going to be 6.25 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, how do we work out wavelength? Well, you know that C is equal to lambda times frequency. And C is going to be equal to, just not put that there, C is 3 times 10 to the 8, right? So therefore, we can work out that is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 4.286 times 10 to the 14, which is going to come out to be uh, red 700 nanometers. Nano times 10 to the minus 9. Ditto, we can do it for the blue on this side over here. The blue is going to be, wavelength of blue is going to be um, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 6.25 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That comes to be blue 480 nanometers. And in essence, what happens is because of this formula above here, all right, sine theta is lambda over d, you can see that the sine theta lambda over d, the greater the um, wavelength, the, big, the, ch the angle is going to change. Let's just do the uh, example. Move this down a little bit. Okay. All right. We've got there sine theta is lambda over d. Okay. So for blue, for blue, sine uh, theta is going to be lambda, okay, 480 times 10 to the minus 9 over D. And for red, okay, um, sine theta is going to be, uh, it was 700, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, it was 700 nanometers. It's going to be 700 times 10 to the minus 9 over D. Now, in essence, we're saying D remains constant, okay? It doesn't really matter. But you can see what's happening here, that the refraction, the sine theta, is going to be bigger than the red, okay? So what are we going to get? Well, essentially, at the end of the day, this is what we get, all right? Um, let's just put in our screen, and we had our there. So with the red, okay, we had coming in like so, and like so, let's say like that, okay, like that. And what do we get with the blue? Well, this, okay. It is made closer to the center like that, okay, right. So the closer is the the blue, all right. It's as straightforward as that. As I said, these, this section is not really uh, uh, very difficult. There's just a couple of key concepts. Once again, learn the laws, etc. Uh, I hope we went through it at a, at a nice pace and it wasn't too, too fast. But as you know, you can stop the video and, and, and do a few calcs and just think about it and put it into context. But like I say, this piece, really not that, uh, that difficult. The formula at the end, um, you know, that's not applicable right now. Some of you may have been seen it, some maybe not. But just from the interest sake, the red and the blue know which way they go. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope to you guys will be looking at the next ones, which is the, uh, the next series of the physics and the chemistry as well. Thanks for watching.